I'm Jeff Gilliam, and I'm the founder and president of First Fridays, the producer of Color Summer. And we've been doing events in this community for the last 25 years, exposing people to various aspects of the Columbus community. And I'm Nanette Macy Jones. I'm the executive director and CEO of the Columbus Museum of Art. And this is my oof. Dates. I think it's like 18 years, and um, we're really excited to be the host venue for this, for this year's Color Summer. This will be the second year we did the Color Summer. We actually started in 2019, and it was a tremendous event. Uh, over 1,500 people, and the community just loved it. And what really brought us on the Color Summer was we were looking for a way to expose a lot of the black community to the arts of the higher way, and also the artist. So, museums is a perfect backdrop for what we're looking to do. And we started 19 this year, we better, but it's really kind of a Coachella meets the Hamptons meets the Met Gala. I mean, it's kind of all those things wrapped into one. I mean, you'll see it, we have a red carpet experience to come out that, you know, when you walk down, we have interviewers, photographers, I mean, everything to walk through with that dynamic. And the kind of reason we chose the, the name, the color of summer is. We want to be festive, we want to be alive. People come to come to festivals, lively festive. It's about a good time. So that's really it. It's exposure to the museum and all the great works they have here is one of our main purposes as well. It's tremendous, tremendous canvas for us to paint what we're looking to do with color summer. So people just were so amazed. And the first time they came through some of the exhibits, I think they had not seen either since a kid, a lot of them not seen even in the innovation. So all of that is a great opportunity for us to kind of develop that kind of partnership to color summer. Well, I think, you know, the museum, um, I mean, I'm so excited that you chose this for a second time, because I, I do think connecting people to the museum and seeing what's going on at the museum, I think, is, is, is wonderful. And I think the museum wants to see itself and, and, and wants to be a community hub for creativity, where ideas are exchanged, where different voices are lifted up, and... I think the importance for African Americans, some of the best, absolutely most creative work being done right now are being done by members of color, or rather than that. that's absolutely true. And um, African American voices, one of the things that we learned when we did the I Choose in America exhibition, when we, as a community, was Paul said the largest celebration of our Renaissance 100th anniversary, um, anywhere, we were the largest one, our community did that. But what we discovered was that uh, for instance, a lot of our young African American artists weren't connecting with dealers. They weren't connecting with galleries. Opportunities to sell their work, opportunities for their work to be seen, so that their work is part of that, you know, cacophony of voices. That all of that's being done. I think that's really important. That, of course, for us this year having um, the event here, of course, because the showcase for us has been Mia you know, Robinson um, all year. It's the largest exhibition we've ever held. Ragged On is the largest exhibition we've ever held in this work. And um, I think that, again, uh, I think when people say, what are the artists that come from Columbus? I, of course, now lead with Amita Robinson. Uh, you know, I, and, you know, Amita Robinson, George Bell, was Elijah Pierce. I mean, I think it's that mix of voices that's important. And expressing people's different people's lived experience. Yeah, no, I think it's... It's amazing you said that in preparation for our event, I came down a few weeks ago and I went to the meeting of and it, it impacted me almost emotionally. I mean, I, I went through and knowing her being from Columbus and knowing her works in general, seeing the breadth and depth of her work and being in that space kind of made a difference. We immediately went back and we actually changed the format of our event that night. We are now going to do a VIP reception surrounded with the meeting of exhibit. I know uh, it was just that impact to our team. We came down with that. These are people who know way more about this. You know about it, but you you missing a gym. You, you got a gym sitting back here in your hands. You need to uncover it. So we actually reformatted the early part of our event to include a reception, and we're really doing a big initiative. I think it's time to touch on that. We're honoring a person who is a long-term contributor in the arts, and this year's honor is going to be David P. Barker. Friend of yours, and yes, so, so David's well known in the art community, and uh, he's just been a stalwart throughout decades in the art. From art gallery owner to sit on many divorce to spend this throughout the art community. So this year is our honor. And we're actually going to do that as part of our Mia Robinson 
uh, the African perception. So, you know, as you kind of talk about the question, how important it is the amplification of this is just tremendously important. You can, have, you can never do enough. I mean, you can never do enough. If ever you've done in the past, you just build on it do more. And I think the connections that people make, the dynamics that they see in this environment, and we're trying to bring a collective group of people here from all walks of dynamics. So the connections come. They may not come naturally in everyday life. Maybe they come together here in the color of summer and make that more important. So that's why I think it's really important that you continue to strive and work to get the talent tied to the people. The talent is there. They need the people and opportunities to be able to exhibit that talent. Yeah, I, you know, I think that um, it is, people come to the Mina Roberts and show, they're just, they are going away. They're just it's, amazed it's by that. And it is, and watching the conversations that take place in those galleries for people who both come, you know, they come as friends, they come as colleagues, and as family, but also people that just encounter each other in the galleries, looking at a work of art, and these kind of spontaneous conversations that, that kind of percolate up at the museum. It's a really amazing to watch. And, and I do think what you just highlighted with David is that I think a lot of people don't think about that. We need our artists. We need all of our creators, our dancers, our fashion designers, our painters, our, dan our, you know, our singers, our musicians. But they need allies and advocates. They need those of us in the I don't know. I can't. I don't know about you. I, I, no, I, I can't shout no, no, no. <laughs> But what they mean from those of us, the things, the, the kind of event uh, Color Summer does is it advocates and allies of artists and creatives help lift them up and help get more people connected to that conversation. I think that's an important role. And sometimes it's overlooked, and I love that you're on because well, that's, really, that, yeah, we, that's, that's what he's done a lifetime on. Yes, yes. yes. Columbus's art culture. You know what? I'm really proud of Columbus. Columbus, that's one of the things I'm most proud of about Columbus. I, I, I love how supportive we are of artists, of individual artists, and the work of artists in our community, and how we showcase it. I and mean, we showcase it in so many ways the work of GCAC, the work of the museum. I, I just, and I think we're, I think we're really experimental. I think we're willing to embrace all kinds of stuff. People really, you know, trying young artists. I just, I'm really proud of that. How we are as a community, allies and advocates for artists. Well, I mean, I'm at a different perspective. Obviously, it's not my day job, but <laughs> over the years, uh, I've been really impressed. Because doing First Fridays, when we started First Fridays, the goal was to expose people to venues and situations they don't get exposed to. So, like, when we first came to the Art Museum with our events, probably in the mid '90s. And we then went to uh, COSI and House Store Society. So I look at the art perspective, but also I see the ability, or not the ability, the growth and the diversity of it and the inclusion of it. And we're always trying to see how can we grab more, how can we be more inclusive in the arts. And the art sometimes is, you know, just for lack of a better term, was stock to be the arts are for a certain level of people, certain level of yeah. income and leisure time. But the arts, especially now the period, the arts is for everybody. There, there are geniuses who create works at home now and doing things that you never thought of. And that connectivity is there. So we see more and more of, we socially a lot of times want to be part of arts. Like this event for us, it took off way more than we ever thought it would. People want to be a part of arts. The artists that we're going to do, once again, with this event, a silent auction for about 50 to 60 artists that will be there and so that works the first time. That's great. They run it and we get more requests than we can because it all will be a part of it. They won't do it. I would never thought that would be something that I'd be involved in 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but it evolves. So I think when you look at the arts community from a perspective like myself, kind of an outsider that doesn't dabble in it and deal in it, I'm more and more impressed with my skin. I'm more and more impressed with the opportunities. Because see, someone like me, I need opportunities in the sense of, I'm not naturally going to flow to it, I need to naturally see more opportunities. I, I come to it because I see the opportunities. So I, I think from the time I've been doing first Fridays to now, it's, uh, it's been meteoric as far as the thought, the education level of, of the arts and commons. And Jeff, just to what you mentioned about that auction, I think that, I mean, getting also, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't 
And yet they can. They can own works of art from artists in our community. You can even know the artists and talk to the artists about their piece. I think that's that's truly, you know, to, to connect, you know, and also the other thing we talk about at the museum a lot is, you know, creativity is, you know, an innate quality of every living human being on the planet. This is a God-given, universe-given, however you think of your spirituality. We are born on our planet with this capacity to create, this, this capacity to, and creativity is part of problem solving. It's how we, we manage our world. It's how we can change our world to make it a more beautiful, equitable place. That's part of creativity. And yet, what we're finding, and this is why your work is so important and why color summer so important, we find, you know, we, there's really depressing data about this. We are crushing that spirit of creativity in children at a younger and younger age. But we need to be doing just the opposite. We need to get we need to get them to embrace their creativity. And we've all had this experience there. In fact, there's a great NASA study that shows that I think 95% of five-year-olds are creating gymnasts. And by the time they get to our age, there's like two percent of us that are left. But it's because we don't see that in ourselves because we haven't lifted it up. And I think events like yours do that for us. It, it connects us and you know, I'm very proud that Sunday is for the museum. Every Sunday is for the museum because, again, for a lot of families, that's a barrier. You know, the cost is a barrier, and um, and also, you know, at the museum, we keep talking now about we don't want people to just feel welcome. That we want people to feel they belong at the museum. We got to work included and belong at the museum. And you got to work that. You got to work at that. Um, it's and it's not just something that happens. No, and this event does. I mean, this event on the scale that we're going to do it in the welcoming nature that you have. Guys have given us. That's, that's really the key. Because now you got to be welcome working with us and making sure we can figure out how to pull some of this off. That's the real key. And our patrons see that. Our patrons understand it, see that, and they, I think, will gravitate to that, not for themselves, but for their families. I, I can. They're willing to come back and try again. No, no, no. They'll definitely encourage it, but I think that they'll do it naturally. I think when you come in and see the things that you've learned, even exposed to you can't say, oh, it's a fabulous situation. I mean, even myself, I said that in the process of it. I probably told 100 people in two weeks, you know, about it. I didn't pay to say that. I said, no, I'm going to tell you how about it. I, I was moved. And I think that the color of summer and our partnership here will move the people that come beyond the ones that actually show up that night. I think it'll look a little bit further. I think they will bring their family and friends to be a part of that. And I think that's what we're trying to do. That's what you want. You want those stepping stones to multiply. And it'll be more and more, and I think it'll multiply and put an event like this, and people will see it, and they'll say, hey, more people need to see this. And they'll be themselves before the museum for a long time. And I think the other thing your event does is, like, you know, the arts can begin to bring us together. And, you know, it, arts are a form of communication. It's a form of sharing experiences, your lived experiences, and finding ways that we can connect more deeply as a community so that we can go forward, as I, I was saying, to create a, a better world and, and really confront some of the really deep problems we have. As, as a, but the arts are there for us. I think that's really going to be. Um, and people seeing that, I think, is always, that's the part I love about walking through the museum. And, 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 and I think you, you get to one really closely. The fact that the time you're in right now, I think the desire to be more connected, the desire to change things and be a part of a better world going forward, art does that. I mean, yes. when people look at a piece of art, they may look at it differently, but they connect in how they look at it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I think you know, they connect in the fact that that's a, one of the greatest conversation pieces that ever have been, that art work is And you know, I, I was just, I was in Cincinnati, I went down to see a show, and I guess, I, I haven't had it happen in a while where, you know, I was standing there and a man was looking at the painting at the same time, and he said, this is what I see. And I said, Oh, hi. And he's explaining what he's on that. This is what I see. And he said, Tell me what you see. And I think those, there's like a permission inside an art museum just to talk to somebody else and say, What do you see? What do you think? You know? Well, you hear good opinion, you can act and not agree, but just to have opinions and, and figure out what you agree or not. I think that's just great for him. I think that when you're not exposed to it on a daily basis, I think it, even more so when you have an event like this to allow you to come in and explore and take the time off, but sometimes with the art, some people don't take the time off to enjoy it. So you've got to almost sometimes purposely take the time off and say, let me just spend my afternoon and just enjoy something that, and that's productivity by enjoying myself. I'm being productive, I'm enjoying myself. 
And you know, the other thing is that sometimes people are scared. They think they have to know something to get involved there. I was like, I don't know enough. People will say that to me. I don't know enough about art to come. I said, really? You have to know anything. Don't get up know anything. Just bring yourself. Because we're trying to change at the museum so that we meet you where you are. Where, you know, what do you want to know? What do you want to experience here? So I do think that I think these kinds of events really, I think quietly you are changing so many lives and we don't even know that, we know that the meeting impact, I think it's a ripple impact that will go decades out at some point. Across the board, we have five bands and we have we call it the Performance Lounge, where we have poets and comedians come together and DJ, and they do a the new thing now, it's called Versus. They do like a, a poet is a poet, which means like that's kind of a versus dynamic. And you get the comedians, and it's all tied to a DJ format there. Um, we also have a part of the showcase tonight, we have a fashion show. The first Friday's fashion show, and last year that was just a hit. Uh, Everyone's calling, I get people for the fashion show. I said, no, we, you got to stand and watch it. But literally, the fashion show is this the most unique thing. We do something where the fashion show, where the band plays along with the fashion show. So the singers walk up down the runway with the, with the models. And it's just a fabulous coordinated ability. It's incredible. So we do that all kind of caps lines. And the art, like I said, we start with the VIP reception. We start out with the artists doing that. Your silent auction. So we want this to be like a large cocktail party where you can walk from room to room, see all the exhibits, see everything here, you take in a full experience. Uh, that that's really what you can you can look to see it. I think that you'll when you come to the color of summer, you won't see events quite like it because this is such a difference from the visual artists, performing artists, the uh, it's the eclectic nature of, of the dress, the food. This year we did something different, we're bringing in a uh, Food stations, there'll be different um, black restaurants around town that have food stations for tastings around them. So that's a new aspect of what we're doing. But it really is it's just an experience. It's more experience than a, a party or an event, it's an experience. And we want to keep growing it every year, keep making it better. And we want people to come here to be our best advocates next year. We want them to say, hey, this is an incredible event that you have to come. And for those of you who want to come to this piece, we can get tickets at First Fridays Back to Life. And they're on sale now, and uh, they'll be on sale until the event. But it's just a tremendous opportunity to see the museum in great light, to have a great time. I mean, Robert says, if you don't come to that, then you missed your own life. That, that's half the value right there. You, you've got to stop there first. That way, you make sure you can get in, you can see it, and enjoy yourself the rest of the night. But just the whole dynamic, our partnership with you guys has been tremendous. Well, we're so, we are really honored that you chose us oh, because no. this is just a spectacular event. And I remember the first, I, I just, this is just an extraordinary event. And the energy and the creativity that everyone feels that night is just spectacular. And um, I'm just so excited to please that the museum is part of it.